Now we are. Hello, 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 hello. We are here and we're on time. I know. That's amazing. Oh, right. Actually, now my phone says 931. So we're kind of. It said 930 when I said go. Yay. Okay, okay. Welcome. It is Halloween week and um, we love Halloween. We love Halloween. Um, I've got Halloween obsessed children, primarily right. my daughter. And um, yeah, so we are. We're, we're getting ready. We're geared up. We're very excited. Uh, my kids are excited for their virtual Halloween parties tomorrow. <laughs> I know. Via they're going to wear their costumes Google in the Google just, Meet and Zoom classes. It's going to be awesome. But it's like Halloween fun without the sugar. So, right. awesome. But speaking of sugar, <laughs> candy, please. This is, we're going to play with uh, Sarah Watts from Ruby Star Society, her candy, please panel. This panel features six blocks. And uh, they all have an adorable something like this on them. Jen's gonna pull out the panel for you. This is a one yard panel, so it's twelve ninety nine. Mm -hmm. And um, digitally printed, and it's a two hundred uh, and it's a two hundred thread count because Ruby Star always does theirs as a two hundred thread count. And uh, yes, it's called Candy Please, and it's adorable and it's super cute. And what we're doing is making trick or treat bags. And so with and one panel, we will make three bags. And there are some instructions on the side. I may have ignored them because that's and how we are. Done in my own way. So her instructions are fine. Nothing wrong with them. No, nope, nothing wrong with them. So what we did is because we are we're quilters and because we can, we are making quilted trick or treat bags. Right. We quilted the panel all as one so piece yes. beforehand. And that was partly just to add a bit of like stability so that they're not quite as lightweight. Of yes. bags. Now you could totally you just can do put this like, without quilting. You can do it without quilting. Same you could just quilting. put fusible fleece on it. Also an option. So I quilt the spider webs on them because I have a computerized long arm and can do that. It's absolutely an unnecessary step. Right. But, but we did it. But don't feel like you have to. But if you are going to quilt them, all I did was I quilted them onto a piece of muslin. So like I said, it's a one yard panel. So I took a yard and a half of muslin and a small scrap of batting and because this gets hidden so i mean it can be whatever if you also have some hideous fa fabric that you inherited or was given to you it could also be the it's, back because it's, it's going to get sewn is. into the bag you're not going to see it. it it's not the lining um and then for the lining of the bag because they're going to be the lining needs to be the same size as the exterior of the bag we cut one yard of cut one of our marbellas which was in our blender wall so, and it was exactly a one yard cut and they were all cut to the exact size of our quilted so panel. When I cut mine down last night, I cut them to be 13 and a half inches wide and 18 inches tall. Now I did it that size because that is honestly the biggest they will go. So you feel free. There's plenty of extra hair. You can see this bag. You can trim it down. It's very tall. It's very tall. There's nothing wrong with a tall bag. Um, but if you want it, if you want to take another inch or two off the height or another inch off, the, you guys, the catch off like the, the headless horseman. I know. Riding the stallion. I love this. I but love it's a unicorn, one. isn't it? Yeah, it is a unicorn. Ruby Star is always a unicorn. Anyway, it's awesome. So, but yeah, so this bag is, is quite tall and we did box the corners and we're going to show you that. I wanted to. Um, but you can make them <laughs> squattier. There's definitely room to trim but, it down. But really quick, I'm going to tell you why I put it together this way. Um, one of the biggest problems with trick or treat bags is a lot of them usually have one long strap. So the I kids did can't open them. Right. So I did two small handles on each side so that it's really easy to open. And especially in the era of COVID, like you don't want to be touching everybody's bag and having all the kids try and right. I don't know how many together. kids' bags I like, had to like open. Kids show up with them. pillowcases and they're like this and the bag's not open and you're like, great, let me Touch my things. I mean, I ha I'm gonna have hand sanitizer and stuff at the door for every time I touch people's stuff. But, but still, this way, there, it's it's a no contact trick or treat, right? And then, I I love boxed corners. Like like I said, like this bag is standing. Um, put some candy in it, and it will always stand up. I did this morning. <laughs> it had, had chews in it. Um, anyway, plus boxing corners takes about a minute and a half. So, but it's also a step step you are allowed. But to if do. you don't want to box the corners. No, but we're going to show you how fast this thing goes together, right? 
So materials needed, this is our strapping that we're using for the handles. You guys, you can make cute candles, you can cover the strapping. Right, it's also called webbing. I think it's called webbing, I put a link in the video. On our website, we call it strapping, and we need two 14 inch pieces. Yeah, so the size I used was 14 inches. At first I grabbed handles. 12, I felt that was a little short. So I went with 14. Went 14. So, what are we gonna do? Liz was my lovely assistant here and already did some of the work for me. But first step is you're going to take two of the panels, right sides together, you know, and we're going to sew around the sides and the bottom, not the top, not the top, Skip the top. <laughs> we're going to do the same thing with, with the lining. However, we'll leave a hole in the bottom. We're going to leave a gap in the bottom of the lining and that's for turning purposes as we get to the end. Right. And mm -hmm. anytime you've ever made a bag or anything of the like, you have to turn it right side Also, out. feel free to use a larger seam allowance if that makes right. you comfortable. On the panel, she said half an inch. I'm doing a little more like three eighths, but yes. seriously, guys, it's this, totally this up to you. This isn't necessarily a quarter inch. Um, if also, you have a walking foot, it that would make handy. this a little easier. That being said, I'm doing one without. And the yeah. bag I made last night, I also did without a walking foot. So don't feel like that's something you have to run out and buy make a bag. If you don't have a walking foot or you don't, like my Bernina, I fight for a minute to get it on every time and sometimes I don't feel like. Right, it's a lot easier for me to put my walking foot on my featherweight than it is on my Bernina. So. And so I'm I'm less likely to put it on my Bernina. This is absolutely true. And, and when you get to the corner here, yeah, if you're going to box it, don't stress so much if you're not exactly in the corner. If you're not going to box it, stress a little bit more. But also, professionals not that not required. These bags, they go together so easily that professionals really isn't a necessity. Right. But I'll have to post a picture of them. I have three kids, and so this panel is perfect for me because I have three kids. Jen has four, so, you know, that's fun for her. Um, you're taking these? I'm making all the bets. Just exactly. kidding. Um, anyway... <laughs> We'll have pictures with our kids we'll on Saturday. Pictures, yes. Our kids are going to trip this together, so it should be a lot of fun. They've been making plans for like three months, I Something swear. Something like that. And, uh, they think they're going to get to go out trick or treating unsupervised. The oldest is 11. Right. And uh, we think that that's a really cute idea, but there's no way that's right. going to happen. Right. Like, I might stand like down the street a little bit. Say, I might watch, but I will be following. Because, well. Right. I'm not quite that confident in their trick-or-treat on their own. Because there's two four-year-olds involved, but, you know. Well, and I'm not sustained. And a seven-year-old, so that's, <laughs> yep. So, so we just, the two four-year-olds and an autistic seven-year-olds, yeah, they still need parental supervision. They kind of need supervision. Maybe not all of this, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to be funny, though. Okay, so. I'm, well, I sew the lining. Now, guys, I'm going to leave about a two-inch gap, three-inch gap at the bottom. On the bottom. Okay, when I made this last night, it was like 10 o'clock, so I kind of forgot that step. You know what I did? I grabbed my seam ripper, and 20 seconds later, I had a two-inch gap on the bottom. Yep. So, do you want me to turn this? I do not want you to turn right, this. I would like you to box one. the corners. How big of a box? Okay, so for the box on this one, I just did one inch in from the seam. So she's not going to measure it from the sides here. I measure it from the. She's going to measure it from that nice gray line from my thread, right here. Yep. Grab my fancy pen. We 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 draw our box. I draw the box. Okay. If you're not familiar with boxing corners. I will hold this up in a second show you. But it's quite literally. Drawing a box. Drawing a box. And they heading it out. I drew my line here and here. It's my box. Then I grabbed my fantastically super sharp micro story to scissors. <laughs> the pins caught my cardigan. <laughs> they do that. It's officially that time of year where you start wearing an extra layer. And uh, sometimes that gets tricky in the pinning quilting world. Right. Depends on my long arm catch it. <laughs> Right. Uh, let's just be honest. I can't have nice things. That's how it goes. All right. Between kids and quilting. Oh. Yeah. This is my life. Anyway, you guys, these are all pieces, by the way. 
I don't know if you can tell, but I'm putting through two layers of quilted stuff to a precise point, and it does it without a problem. All right, all the way to the point. Missing like a thread. They're off. Awesome. They're kind of pricey as far as scissors go, but well, not too bad. They're no worse so. than my gingers. I think true. they're better than my gingers, price-wise. That being said, I still love my gingers. Okay. Gingers are great shears, right? Which is, do you want me to press this open or to the left? Press right? it open. Okay. So when we go to box our corners, I don't know if you guys remember this part. We go in and we kind of squish these together. We match our seams. And um, fun fact, if you don't want to, you don't have to box the lining. Right. So it does make for a nice, a nicer finished product to box the lining. That being said, these are trick or treat bags for the kids. And so nobody's I'm, ever gonna see the I'm, lining. I'm, I'm probably not. <laughs> I do. I I think it's more important to box the lining, is especially if you're doing a if you're doing a like small a bag, small bag or a purse or um, a clutch or right something you yeah. Then yeah, but like these little tote bags for kids. Really I'm just probably not gonna wear about it. Allowed to skip. Right. But if you do, if you but you want to do feel it free, and if you're going to, you follow this exact same process. Right. Box it in, like she said, a, a, an inch from the seam. Right. Always measure from your seam, even if you 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 think you're making a perfect quarter inch seam, so you're gonna do one and a quarter. It's still gonna be more accurate to box from the seam, especially when I'm dealing with a quilted product like this. Um, <laughs> I sewed all the way. Seam repair. Here, do this. I'll fix your mistake. Gracias. All right, so she's just got a couple of pins here, and I'm just gonna smush it, smush right here, and and sew right across that line. Now I will. I know I always tell people we don't backstitch in this game. We yeah, back I'm gonna backstitch in game. <laughs> Piecing we don't backstitch. Boxing and Box linings with bags and stuff. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's a different beast. You guys, so we just, it's not the same as piecing. We backstitch here, or lock stitch, whatever it call is it. you call it. I learned backstitch, and that's probably when I, I learned, learned by eight. piecing apparel. Yeah, piecing apparel. You can tell piecing apparel. My whole um, making apparel different than it used to be. I always just called it sewing, but now I call it like making garments because. Sewing is so much more than making clothing. Yes. And I'm kind of glad I haven't sewn a prom dress in 20 years. Because oh my gosh. They, okay. <laughs> they weren't fun then. Right side out, right? Yep, so turn that one right side out. So, all right. Fun step on making a bag. Now we pin the tops together. Right. And what we're going to do is... So we have our hole right here, you guys. This hole's going to come in handy after we... Just the next step. as with all piecing... We want right sides facing. So I'm gonna so that that one's right side out, that one's wrong side in, out in the bag. Okay. And what she's gonna do is she's gonna match up. We're gonna match our seams. The seams. Again, we match what matters. We're gonna match those two seams. Now, if my seam allowance was an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch difference between the two, we can fudge. We can work that in. But what I don't want is this seam right here ending up here. Yeah, I want it. I want it where it goes. And, well, it and so any it's fudging out the variance. Right. So any fudging we have to do can be done in the in the middle, which is what we do with quilting all the time, or dressmaking or whatever or the process is. All like of it. you just don't want all of the variance to end up in in one spot in one place. That's oh, my bad for my follower because I'm taking a drink. I apologize for us always having beverages on our table, but talking nonstop is kind of a great drives me out thirst. Okay, so I did the sides and then I do the center. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, sides and center. She's talking with pins in her mouth. And why are you doing backwards? Why do you have a pointy side out? I don't want to stab my throat. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I guess always it's do it that thing. way. Really? Always. I always put the pointy side in. Why? So you can stab your mouth? So that I can grab the the ball of, on the edge of the pin. Well, I guess it's okay when you and I share pins then. <laughs> <laughs> you put the opposite end in your mouth, and I do. 
Here we go. Oh my goodness. The things you learn over time. I never knew that she put, I knew she always put pins in her mouth because I do too, but I never knew that we did it differently. Yes, because I don't want to stab my, my tongue. You don't. These are sharp suckers. I know, but you, just right there. Yeah, no, no. -uh. Which way do you guys put pins in your mouth? <laughs> We're never supposed to put pins in our mouth. Oh, whatever. Which way do you put pins in your mouth? Like the pointy side or the ball? That that's an interesting. That question. is an interesting question. I'm curious. <laughs> Actually, what right. people do. Me too. Okay, so now we're just literally sew around the top. So same three Take eighths, half inch, easy seam peasy. allowance. Make oh, choice. you want the handles? I do want the handles. Thank you, Liz. Damn, I knew I okay, okay, so what we're gonna do? Um, like this. I figured out my placement for the handles. Oh, I placed them three inches in from the seam. So what I'm gonna do is grab the little friction pen here. So when we do this, you guys, we want to make sure they're going to make this that this pretty little U, right? Right. Instead of like this wound this way. Right. We or don't opposite. want them all twisty. I don't want them opposite. I don't want them. We're going to make this pretty little perfect ribbon. You know, it's like your support ribbon U shape. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the plan. That's how we put them on. So I drew a little dash on here, three inches in from the seam. Now, that's where the outside, that's where the outside goes. So the rest of it goes gonna go in. So what I'm gonna have to do here is I'm gonna take out these three pins that she put in. And go down into the bag. And we're gonna go down between the two layers. Yes, oh my gosh, yes. So that it's, it's in the center here. I'm not in a visual space, but I'll come over there in a second, do the other side. And I want it nice and straight with and the you can top. do a horizontal pin low beneath your seam allowance right here. Yeah, see, so what I would to do to keep this wrapping level and okay. in place. See, see this pin I just put right there. It's totally out of my seam allowance, but it's holding the. It's going to hold all of the strapping where it goes vertical. And because this strapping is a full inch and a half wide, if you only put one pin at the top, it's really easy for it to wander, to get dance. wonky. So we want to just go ahead and pin it nice and straight. Nice and straight with the top edge of the bag. And then flat across. Flat across down here. And when I get to the strapping, guys, I will slow like, down. backstitch and slow down over it. Because that is going to be the point on this bag that is going to go under the most pressure. It's the most likely place you're going to end up with a thread break or a needle break or a... Or the bag ripping. Or the bag, anyway. Over time. Over time, because that's where the pressure comes from on the bag. In fact, it doesn't hurt to go over the strapping part twice. Right. Just to lock it in really okay. nicely. So I'm going to have... I'm going to put this over here because it's better visibility. Did you do the other one this way? It doesn't matter, way. actually. It'll flip. Sorry. So, but you want to make sure you're putting it in nice and level. So we open the bag, right, guys, like this. I'm going to put this guy in, in my little fancy U-shape. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring it up nice and level with the top of the bag. Pull the lining right up so Pull you've made a little so sandwich. Nice flat. Take my long pin, bring it down here outside my seam allowance. Right. Right. So my and foot's not going to touch that pin. That pin can stay there until I'm done. Yep. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Well, out of where the foot's going to bug her. Right. And then, and then repin the top. This. I'm glad we remembered that. That would have been unfortunate. <laughs> right? There we go. <laughs> and we're going to sew all the way around because we have a hole in the bottom. That's why there's a hole in the bottom. Um, we don't have to worry about leaving a space here in the top. Um, and then last, we are going to top stitch the top of this. Yes. To um, it's our iron arm. Hold. No. Um, turn our iron to hold things in place and to, you know, when you don't top stitch a bag, it can, so she just reversed and went over the strapping again. Right. So it got sewn three times. Yeah. Um, we do top stitch this bag to, to hold everything down, especially when you have a quilted layer, you guys, um, it's just gonna, it ends up seeming a little puffy. Keep the, um, it's gonna keep the lining from coming out over the top or the top sinking down into the lining. And it's just gonna it hold really the structure of the bag. It really does make for a nice finished look. Um, um, and it takes about 
30 seconds. Maybe, so maybe slightly longer, but not much. It's totally worth it's worth taking doing. that step. Oh. Got it. I forget to go over this strap. Reverse. And, and that top stitch seam, you guys, we do it somewhere between between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. It's a very narrow seam near the top of the bag. Mm -hmm. Because what you're kind of trying to do is catch that seam allowance in everything and just lock it all into place one more time. Right. And if you end up with a couple little puckers in your lining because of the strapping and whatnot, no big deal. Nobody will ever see it. You keep missing the pimple. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I keep finding pins around the pimple. I'm focused. I know I can do that. I'm very impressed. Thank you. I'm actually kind of impressed with my ability to sew and talk and stand at the same time. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, it's a little harder than walking and chewing gum. Just a little. <laughs> I love making bags. The whole like maneuvering it around the machine thing. It's super fun. Now, if you have a machine with a nice uh, throat that you can... A free arm. A free arm. That's that, what you're looking for. Yeah. Those are nice for things like this, but uh, this is, has a big enough opening that it's not a necessity right. or anything. Well, and that's the thing. Like, the one I made last night, I made on my Bernina, which does have a nice free arm. Um, but it means I have to lift it up out of the, the table. table, the thing out of the table. And it wasn't worth it. So <laughs> Now, if I was sewing sleeves onto a dress, yes, I would do it. Absolutely. All right. So I'm taking out my little horizontal pins on the side. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my lining, reach in the hole, grab the body of the bag, grab the body of the bag, and pull it out. Easy peasy. Yeah. And okay. make, your, make your hole a little bit bigger in the lining, it's also not the end of the world. Okay, now there are a couple ways you can finish the bottom here. One would be a nice like ladder stitch. With the hand, stitch finish, something, the hand to finish it and make it invisible. Not see the seam. This is the bottom of a kid's trick or treat bag. So I'm going to press that and then sew an eighth and an inch seam all along the bottom because that's fast. By she's going to press that, she means she's going to hand it I'm to I'm going to hand it to Liz and she's going to press it for and me. I'm going to press it for her. I mean, I could like push I'm her out of the way. Try to do the same thing. But, but this is just easier. And yeah. are you through the handles where you want to be? We're okay. Yeah, because I, 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 oh, I can go like this. I just want to make sure that nothing's out of place to where we're going to regret this in a minute. <laughs> right? Right. It wouldn't be the first time. No. So Because, you know, we're human. It happens. So I'm just going to sew this closed. Nice narrow seam along the bottom. Nothing fancy. No. You can totally be fancy, guys. Yes. Don't, don't, don't feel that. like you have to. We are trying to shove this into a 20 minute video. So right. we're not being fancy. No. But you can be that fist But the thing is, once I, once I take this right here and put it inside the bag, you'll never see it again. <laughs> you'll never see it again. So, so here we have our box corners and everything. Look, now I can do Okay. Okay. Now, this is why. We, top we want a top stitch. You'll see how the lining's popping out. Because the seam, because of the seam allowance and the, the fact that this is quilted with batting, it wants to. Now, it can look like a cute little line top, you know, if that's your, right, if that's your preference. But once you put candy in, it's going to be like, yeah. Yucky. So, we want to fold that down. Right, you guys. And we're going to use the iron. We're going to press it and press it where we want it. Now, this is a time, like when I did mine last night, I, I still have my ironing board set up from doing some binding because I usually only have a pressing mat out in my sewing room because it's about this big. For sewing room, that's right. Sewing my room. sewing room is about this big. It's smaller than this room. But anyway, I had my ironing board set up and I put it over the end. Like, you yes, know, like a clothes. shirt, like with shirts and stuff. And so that makes pressing this top really simple. Now, I'm not going to run out to my mom's garage here and steal her ironing board. I'm just going to make Liz do it the hard way. Because I'm, I'm nice. Yeah, that's what she says. And if things aren't quite laying down all the way for you, pins. It'll and do great. You can finger adjust as you sew it. As to. we go. But we definitely, I'm trying, what we're trying to do is just kind of set things in the right direction. Right. Okay. 
And it's not necessarily going to change the direction that my batting is going to go. But what it's going to do is it's, the, it's creating that fold on the lining fabric, which when I feed through the machine, I'm going to go back to that fold that I've already, that has already been created. It it's, may have been pushed a little bit out of the way, but it's, but it's perfect, already been it's already been created. created. And so I have something to go for, to go to. Yeah. And you're not completely trying to just do it all by hand. Right. At the machine. Right. I'm going to set this right here. I hope that makes sense. I do love these bags. I don't know, they're super cute, right? Right. Okay. So as you can see, it's still kind of popping out, but not as much. But it's going to make it a whole lot easier for her to... For me to feed top through. stitch that. And this is, out. again, if you have a free arm, that this is great. You don't need one. Because now, I would prefer to do this from the top and not the lining. Right. So, I when you, when I sewed it together, I sewed it with seeing the lining on top because it's just a little easier that way. I don't want that this time because what I want to control is the outside of the bag and what I see. And you can't do that from the inside. So, this mm -hmm. is at the point where if you do have a machine with a free arm, it is a little bit easier. But clearly, it can be done right. on the better way or on a machine without taking it out of your cabinet. Right. And and this is one where I will probably do like an inch or two at a time. Yes, and then you and adjust everything. And... Because we want to get this accurate. As and much as and you'll notice I dropped my needle. That's because if I'm going to be over here tugging and adjusting, I, I want it to stay where it is. <laughs> yes. You know, because otherwise I have to go find it, and then there's extra thread in there. And yeah. That's no fun for anybody. We're going to let the needle be helpful when we do the right. adjustment. Right, so even though, here. like, when I lifted my pedal, it ended up, I put it back down. Yep. For sure. Cool. Anyway. This has been fun, you guys. I love candy bags and I love trick or treat and I know it's been a rough year and um and I know not everybody's and I know not everybody's comfortable with trick or treat this year but my kids are seriously looking forward to it and it was one of those things I decided I can't take away from them. No well and we're not doing a big party actually we're yeah. avoiding we're avoiding parties a party in our neighbor well and like there's one in my neighborhood too we're avoiding no, that we're avoiding the parties and, and just, just traditional trick or treating with yeah. some treats after and we're doing small scale Halloween. In fact, this year. in fact, I'm honoring enough that uh, they'll come home from trick or treating, and I will take away their candy and give them another treat instead. Right. I went and bought another bottle of the Microban yesterday. Did you? To, I like, did. Spray everything right. down. Lay out their candy. And... <laughs> I'm. I'm. Anyway, we're trying to do this as big as possible. Right. Right. Without completely avoiding a really fun event for our kids. Right. So anyway, we hope you have a good time, you guys. We have a few of these panels left. They're a lot of fun. And if you can't make them for this year, there's plenty of time to make them for next year, clearly. And um, maybe Hello. next Halloween will be less stressful. Won't that be great? I, I just hope next everything is less stressful. <laughs> no, but we have a trick-or-treat bag, so now I have a set of two. Time to make a third. But right there. I know. I'll take it home. But it says trick-or-treat and then candy, please. How fun is that? You guys, and another thing, if you do need to make a bunch of these, so like I have four kids, I'm going to buy one panel because you buy a fun, there's a fat quarter bundle designed to go with this line. Right, one. that's four fat quarters. And so I can put like one of the spider webs or one of the bats or one yeah. of those on the back of the bag so that you don't have to get another panel. Plus, it means my kids' bags are all different. Also, on top of that, you guys, you can... It's fun, like when she does her cutie cube class. We have covered the strapping with oh yeah, fabric. we cover the strapping, all and the you time. could use the other fat quarters to cover the strapping and make the fat the handles really cute. Right, it's just but this is nice, you guys. This is perfect for trick or treat because it's a the the bag can be open. It's easy to put stuff in without people having to help to touch and be helpful. Plus, then so. the kids can walk down the street and do this, Swinging. and the strap's not really long, happen. and so it'll keep the stuff inside in, the bag and closed. And closed. So All thanks right. for joining us. Have a good Halloween. We will come at you next week okay. from our retreat. Next week the live will be from the retreat. So yeah, it's going to be great. It will probably be outdoors. It'll probably be outdoors. So if Liz and I are going like this, don't be shocked because it's November in Idaho. Um, and we are doing our, our free pattern from our 
November newsletter. So if you're not signed up for the newsletter, you got a week to do so. To do so. Yep. And it'll be great. And but we're gonna, your free we pattern. won't be here. <laughs> no. It will be in I'll be in Idaho. Yep. Which if you need to know where that is, like Google, Google the middle of nowhere and take a left. And you'll find it. And that's where I'll be it is. But yeah, it's great. All right. Have a great night. week, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us.